bummer. Because the problem with not having the tank at your house is that you can't get all the crabs right when they shed and you lose a lot to be in paper shells. Man, these are such pretty things. See, some people grow up, they want cars and money and all this awesome crazy stuff, but my ambition's a little more obtainable in my opinion. Got myself a dumpster, dude, and a 7.3 that runs and starts in the winter. I've even been fortunate enough to afford myself a vacation. We're starting this Monday off a little unconventionally. <laughs> Last work week did not stop. We did not get any rest because we sold crabs every day. Going into Monday a little tired, not gonna lie, but that's all right. We are starting off not with a full day of crabbing, but with a full day of filming. This is one of the unique things that I'm having to adapt to it's in my new life, being a crabber that also makes videos. Brad Leone, he's a chef. He's filming for his YouTube show, but they're coming to Maryland to do some stuff about crabs and film with me. We're gonna get the boat ready. We're gonna probably fish 100, 150 pots. Funny thing, because I mean, I'm always filming by myself. It's guys like this, man, they really do it up. They have a whole production crew. They have multiple people filming. It's an entourage. But I'm, I've been a big Brad Leone fan for a long time, and we, we have a lot of mutual friends in the industry. I'm excited to meet him. Him and I have been talking for a couple years now, trying to put something together, and it's finally now just worked out. I'll bring you guys along and kind of get to see the behind the scenes of uh, of the YouTube show. So Landon, I told you the plan, right? That we're filming today and stuff like that? He told me. All right, this guy Brad, they're on their way, but do you know how to drive a boat? I know how to drive a boat, yeah. All right, cool. I'll probably have you drive the black tip. Well, I think we'll be on there for a while, at least driving his boat with another camera guy on it. I'll plug in my new soft crab shanty tank, so. Uh... You know, nice this is you. early for me, but I'm glad we're here. <laughs> it's nice to meet you in person. Oh, yeah, you too. We're getting ready to haul here. We got Brad, man. Crabber for the day, but can you tell the difference? I can tell. I can tell by your, <laughs> your really short you know, like slickers. Them, them complete, they don't make XLTs. Luke, yeah, right? I guess so. You're hey, super Grunge, tall. call me, all right? I can't find a pair that's fit me. Is Brad a Crabber? I don't oh. know. We'll find out. What do you think, AJ? <laughs> Pleading the fifth. Pleading the fifth. <laughs> Sounds good. Two camera guys and a producer and all that. Today, Landon's got the cake job he's just driving the boat it's crabs in the boat yeah buddy it's a little more coordination that goes into a high dollar shoot like this not a high dollar it's higher production a little different than what i usually do jumbo luke oh yeah that's a nice big as your head i can't see your face that's <laughs> a pretty crab right there that's don't even fit the frame looking crab bud that's right where are what are these waters here luke chesapeake bay oh proud don't get no better than that Woof. Right. true crab that's right oh, upper bay Big pretty crab. Heck yeah. We're gonna put some peeler crabs here in the tank and hopefully they shed out in the soft crabs. That's what I'm hoping. I'm excited to finally see them. You see that little red line on that second swim fin right there? Kind of see it. That means this crab is gonna be a soft crab. He's in the process of turning into a soft crab. I got hope for that one. Can you believe that crab is the same crab? And this crab just came out of that shell. That's how much they grow. First fresh soft crabs out of my homemade soft crab shedding tank. Crabs cannot grow their actual shell. They have an exoskeleton. So in order to grow, they need to shed their old shell off, which is like this. So the back will bust open and then the crab will pull out the back of that shell. It's amazing how much they grow. That, that crab was stuck inside that shell. Isn't that pretty nuts? And look at those little claws compared to the claws she has now. This crab also happens to be a mature female. So she will actually never shed again. Well, not only because we're gonna eat her in a sandwich, but female crabs never shed again after they shed from an immature to a mature female. So if you flip them over, you can see how the apron here is shaped like a pyramid. And now her apron is shaped like a dome. So when she sheds, from an immature female to a mature female, her apron changes, and then that's when the big male crabs are gonna breed her. So you'll see like a big dominant Jimmy male that'll be holding the little immature female uh, in his legs, you know, kind of like this, carries her around for about two weeks until she sheds out. And the only time the crabs are gonna breed is the one time when she is a soft crab female and he's a hard crab male. Breed and then he's gonna drop her and she's gonna get hard and then she's gonna carry all that, uh, you know, crab 
love nectar around in her and use that to sponge six, seven, eight times in her life and reproduce for the rest of her life. Well, we're doing a crab eating segment for Brad's show. Running around all day, going to my sister's graduation after filming and then running, running back here to try to make the rest of filming. And of course, I forgot all the crabs. So I gotta go back and get the crabs <laughs> from my house. Classic. Awesome to finally kind of to meet you, man. I know I've been following your your crabbing and boating and life adventures and stuff. You know, I love crabbing. I grew up kind of just for fun like, yeah. with my folks and stuff. How'd you get into crabbing, man? I'm like, fruits of our labor. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, Here's oh. a hammers if you guys want them. These are actually uh, yeah, leftover. Show us that so, hey, these yeah. are our oh, wedding amazing. favors. So I think the shoot with Brad went pretty well. Dude is awesome. Just. Like I would I kind of imagine he's pretty much exactly the same on camera as he is in real life. We're headed out now, we got quite a bit of gear to haul and we're tired. I feel like I've had one two week long week. Be nice to get done a little early today, although I'm not sure that's gonna happen. Guy can wish though. It's pretty out. Pretty morning. The crab uh out icing call box seems to be working pretty well actually. See they're super slow, they're not pinching each other. It actually seems to work pretty nicely. I like it. We got a couple of fish here that are fish that we catch all the time. We got a white perch. We catch those in the bay a ton. I mean, this is like staple fish. Pretty much every kid grows up catching these. They're actually great eating when they get a little bigger. You know, you can actually fillet them. That's a pretty decent sized one right there. We catch these a lot. Especially in the spring, they come coming out of the creeks. So right now, they're in my pots because they're trying to eat all my soft crabs. That's a channel cat right there. Technically an invasive species, not technically native to the bay, but they've been here a really long time. They get a lot bigger than this. This is a pretty small one, really. We see these a lot in the spring. This is a white catfish. A lot of people always get them confused with blue catfish, which is the invasive one. But a white cat doesn't have a split tail. It's got a straight tail. It's not forked really. And white cats have humongous heads compared to the rest of their body. See how wide that thing's face is? How big its mouth is and all that. They're actually the only native catfish to the Chesapeake, believe it or not. I'm trying to eat my soft crabs too. People always uh, run over the new ones somehow. That's what I get for putting pots in shallow water, but hey, had a couple crabs in it. We could fix her. That does suck though. That's a brand new pot. That's only been in the water for a month. Expensive mistake right there, but I think we'll pull her straight. There's John, looking like a tourist. <laughs> hey, if you want an autograph, I'll be at the crab stand Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 3 at 7333 East Furnace Branch Road in Glen Burnie. Is that cool? I guess he doesn't speak English. Poor little fella. What's he say? I think he said, can I buy a t-shirt? Yeah, you can buy a t-shirt too. I'll have t-shirts at the crab stand as well. You can also get them online. Oh, he's speaking sign language. Maybe he's deaf. I don't know. He said he two dozen for deal. I think he did say they were having a couple two dozen deals this weekend. Did you catch anything? Yeah. Couple. It's glad to hear you're finally catching a couple. As you can see, mostly pots full of disappointment on here. We've had a lot of rain lately and get all this garbage that comes down the Conowingo Dam when they open the gates up after the rain. We pick it up when it comes up in the pots, but we'd be here all day trying to net it up. We pick up as much as we can, pretty sad. Definitely find a lot of these. A lot of balloons. Happy birthday. Well, it was not a great day crab. Yeah, once again, crabbing was not very good today. If I didn't build that shedding tank, we'd really be hard up. <laughs> we'd be losing way more money than we are this week already. No hard crabs right now. I'm not too, too worried because I know they're going to show up. I know they're around. I mean, there's some crabs coming in the boat that are junk, and I know some other guys are crabbing in different areas. They have a bunch of crabs in pots. They're just all the crabs are junk. The good crabs are very, very few and far between. It's just a waiting game. They're there. It's not like there's nothing bay-wide. It's just... We're just waiting on them. Can't rush nature. Big crabs are doubled up. The little crabs are shedding. That is a bummer though, seeing a bunch of pots full of disappointment. <laughs> we had a nice weekend, so there's a lot of boat traffic and a lot of the pots I had in the shallow water got run over, but can't really do anything about it. That's the risk you run crabbing in shallow water. Don't put nice gear in shallow water. Ooh. That was a pretty soft crab that I should have pulled this morning, but he's a paper shell now. 
She got her lucky. Oh, another one. See, I felt these this morning. And I, I even put them back because they were a little too soft. And just in that few hours, now that crab's a paper shell, unedible. That's why soft crabs cost so much. So I'm going through crabs here. These are peeler crabs. See, these crabs are going to turn into my soft crabs. You're, that is a beautiful be looking a soft crab sandwich. Brad, thanks for coming down, man. Thanks for cooking Let them. Let me thank you, man, anytime. Lock up them soft shells. I'm coming. Freaking awesome. That was definitely the best soft crab sandwich I've ever had. That was great. Brad and John <clears throat> trying to shoot a snakehead with the bow. <laughs> From the roof of the house boat. Hey, Luke, we need to get the boat. Well, I will go bankrupt crabbing like this. <laughs> this is terrible. If I didn't have these soft crabs, I would be like super screwed. But So when we come in now, the guys are loading the boat. I come over here to check the soft crabs. I'm just looking to see the ones that are dead like this. They didn't make it a lot of times, especially the males. They'll start to shed and then they'll die like right there. Or they'll come out like partially and then they'll pass away. It's pretty common. I'm also pulling out the little spent shells, ones that the crabs came out of. Picking up soft crabs that shed out uh, last night or this morning or whenever. Ow! Get pitched quite a bit. These ones can be sold as bait. They're not a total loss, but certainly don't get near the money that I would from a soft crab. See, some of them like get all the way out like this and then die. The male peelers are a lot harder to keep alive than female peelers. Soft crab like this is still good. This one could be cleaned and then frozen and sold like that instead of sold live. We don't get as much money, but at least it's something. That's a big giant pretty one there. That one's a paper shell. One shed out and sat too long. Big pretty soft crabs. Look at that one. It's got a funny looking shell. It's like Batman. That happens because the points get stuck in the top of the shell when they're trying to get out of there sometimes. Sometimes you grab one and it's a hard crab. It looks like a soft crab. That one looks like a buster. Yep. That's a bummer. That would have been a giant. Pretty good hole though this morning. Holy cow, that's a lot of soft crabs. That's awesome. That is about the prettiest prettiest sight you'll ever see in the morning. That is awesome. Could be yours, 7333 Furnace Branch Road in Glen Burnie. We open Saturday and Sunday, 11 to three. I am regretting not putting that gear where I initially took it when I took that big trip down because the crabbing where I'm at totally sucks. I want to move, now I gotta like pick it all up, stack it on the boat, move it twice. Probably will do. And just kind of try to have to battle my way in there. A little bit of a bummer, but I'll tell you what, grabbing like this, I'll go broke. My original plan is not working out. That's vision. Got to be able to pivot, chase them down, catch them, get them in the boat. Two guy crew, uh, AJ and Landon here lately. Uh, right now I have Cam who works on CJ's boat over at FB Miss Paula. He's been helping me on CJ's day off. He's a pretty good worker as well. Not a diploma between any of us. <laughs> but hey, we can get some crabs in the boat. It's another 500 to fish today. Don't know that there's gonna be much in them. I'm fingers crossed and really hoping today is a little better than yesterday because I have gear in a little different spots and a little bit of different bottom. The weather hasn't been cooperating too well with us. I mean, it's like farming. That's half a crab in us. We're dependent on a bunch of things that we have zero control over. Tell on paper, terrible business. It doesn't make much sense at all. In reality, it's pretty much the same, but we're gonna do it anyway. Too dumb to quit. That's like the cra crabbers had a union. The local 69 crabbers union, our motto would be too dumb to quit. I, I should, I'll put that on a t-shirt, that's funny. I'll give you a little bit of tour, like the back half of the operating space like, on the Southern Girl. And there's three jobs besides the captain on the boat, fishing underwater line. Usually the sexiest, most hardworking, coolest guy on the crew who's running the boat, the winder, the captain. I take that job just because, I don't know. And you're gonna have your shaker who stands here, shakes the crab pots after the captain uncooks them. He's gonna rebate, shake the crabs out into this coal box right here. He's gonna drop the pot into this tank to get clean. And then the guy that's stacking is gonna pick the pot up out of here, stacking on these metal tracks, push it 
the back of the boat. And the crabs get shook into this call box. And then usually I'll have somebody who's called the color, imagine that, stands here. And this is where they live. They're taking the crabs and they're sorting them, grading them right here, right out of the call box into small, medium, large, extra large males, peelers, and females. It's a little bit of a different perspective here. And baskets back here. So this is where we store all the crates and baskets. These are called lugs. Uh, we typically put the crabs in here. Females and peelers. Sometimes I'll put in these wooden baskets. I think the crabs live better in these wooden baskets. Uh, you also got your hose back here. You have a little bit of open space that's kind of for whatever. Pots will be stacked all the way from here all the way up. This tank is to put the peeler crabs and the really, really soft, soft crabs in. Fill this up with water. It helps them shed out on the boat so we can have some soft crabs by the time we hit the dock. All our bait back here. So this rack, everything really helps this little boat become a little bit of a bigger boat. We also have the uh, heat rack exhaust, which is really nice. I mean, you just about stick your hand on that. It doesn't even hurt you. Up here is the console where I run. This pedal runs the winder. Right now, AJ's running the boat. Fine with me. But we have an intrepid crew. AJ, Landon, well, once again borrowed Cam from CJ. They say all Asian people look the same. You white boys. I can barely tell you all apart. <laughs> What'd you say, AJ? Another day, another zip tied belt. Yep. That's Crabber standard right there. You know how they have stuff that's military grade? That's Crabber grade. Crabber grade. This is, uh, why did I just not put my glove on? Really? Like, that's exactly why I wear the other gloves. It's gross. All right, take two. It's an LY. You don't catch them all that often, and that is because they don't actually eat any of the bait that we put in pots. Filter feeding fish, basically the bottom of the food chain here in the bay. Pretty much what every single thing in the bay eats. They're really slippery and slimy too, but mouth open. You can see they, oh my gosh, look at that thing. Holy cow, dude, look at the tongue bug in that thing. That is disgusting. So these fish get a parasite that actually gets inside of them that they eat by accident, you know, they catch trying to filter feed, and it eats the tongue of the fish and takes the tongue's place. It basically just is a parasite off of the fish. You can see it in there. That is so gross. Ugh, I give you nightmares there. Oh, look at that. He's still alive too. Look at that alien looking thing. Oh my gosh. It's like in your nightmare. We'll look underneath of it. We look in the back. It's completely full of eggs or something. See all the little baby tongue bugs in there? That's not something I'd want to encounter at all. Oh, he just dropped her. That was a double right there. Hey, look at that thing. That's a giant right there. Big, beautiful, pretty crab. Could be yours. 5 times more than what it's worth right now. You can only kill a crab once. So. I like throwing them back. I hope other guys do it too, although not everybody does. And that's okay. I get it. I don't have much market even for them. If I had market for them, I'd probably keep them. Actually a pretty good day. Certainly didn't burn them, but compared to what we have been doing, I was happy to see some signs of life. A bunch of light crabs showed up, which moved the nice crabs around, and I was able to catch quite a few of the nice ones, which was Sight for sore eyes. Good to see. Just happy to see it. The light crabs, we're just gonna have to wait them out, wait till they get ripe. But once they get ripe, man, there's gonna be a lot of crabs. My prediction is third week of June, we're gonna have it's gonna be, be the beginning of a bunch of nice crabs, all different sizes of crabs, too, all mixed together. It was really, really, really good to see. We're gonna have to move some gear around. We're gonna have to do a little, sh a little shuffling, try to get on a few of these crabs the weekend. And thank goodness the uh, soft crabs are working out. Well, I'd really be in trouble this week. We call it vacation, but it costs you money to go do something. Here's our buddy Dave Quaid, the Helen R, going fishing. 
fishing, taking another party. I know I talked about Dave last week. You guys saw him. He's just been fishing around where I crab. He's like one of those dudes that's just been in the game for so long. Nobody argues with the fact that he's kind of like a local legend around here. There's guys like that in the crabbing world, like my buddy Mr. Charlie and his wife Miss Val have been crabbing forever on a little boat. They've just been here longer than anybody else. And when it comes to crabbing and charter fishing, there's always people that don't like each other and what <laughs> another AJ can video. You know. <laughs> there's always guys that don't like each other or whatever. Guys like Dave and guys like Mr. Charlie and Miss Val, they're kind of graduated over that hump where They've been in it for so long that pretty much nobody argues with them. It's a good problem to have here, but I have way too many uh, peeler crabs. Not really too many, just too many for this one tank. So I have another tank. I'm gonna try to put that thing here, maybe, and then put the other tank on top and see if we can get two of them going because this many crabs will just basically start eating each other. Pretty crazy. We went from having pretty much zero crabs in the pot to fish in rows that were skunked empty they're now having like 10 nice, big, pretty black crabs in the pot. They just appear one day sometimes. And I mean, that ain't a crab that just shed either. That's a crab that's been been right since last year. Pretty awesome. That's how crabbing goes. Sometimes you're the bug, sometimes you're the windshield. Check this crab out. He's got a funky shell. See how his shell looks like he's crinkled up like that? Actually, his devil, like as long as outside his body, and that's because when these crabs shed, sometimes their shells, when they're soft, get stuck inside their exoskeleton that they're trying to shed out. And they'll drag it around or something will happen. Their new shell will end up getting hard, even though it's not fully laid out. It kind of looks like Batman or sort of looks a little Asian. I can say that because I'm Asian. I've seen them with legs and claws and stuff growing out of their mouth because they got stuck like that when they were trying to shed. You could buy this funny looking crab. Check up on the hours and availability on Facebook, Bakken Point Seafood, FB Southern Girl Bakken Point Seafood on Facebook. The crabs kind of showed up here a little bit. We were pulling rows that were like stone empty yesterday. We fished the pots today from two days ago. They were also stone empty and they were loaded with crabs. Most of the crabs are junk. We can't keep them. Good to see things moving around. It's good to see something happening. I am really hoping I can sell these soft crabs because I have a load of them. I have way too many crabs in my little soft crab tank right now and I have another tank in the back of my truck that I have to set up. But the other crazy thing is yesterday I caught like 300 peeler crabs, which are what turned into soft crabs. And then today I probably had a dozen. It's just like that. That's how nature changes. So the soft crab tank is working awesome. The problem is uh, there's no room in the inn. We're a little overpopulated here in general populace, so we have to add a second floor. So this is gonna be the luxury apartments here, the haves, these are the have-nots. Every society has them. And uh, these are gonna be the crabs. They're gonna be closer to shedding, I think, probably like uh, the busters and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm really just making it up here because John's here at the marina all day and he's not young. He ain't old, but he, he's not young and I don't want him to have to bend over to get crabs out of here. So he likes checking on them anyway. So I'm gonna make this one the crabs that are close to being soft crabs and down there, it's gonna be the general populace and they'll get transferred in their uh, luxury home until it's time to be sold so I can pay my mortgage. I know it's wrong, but life's not fair. I'll tell you what, if you were down there on the bottom, a crab would not think twice about eating you. They uh, have no feelings or remorse. The other issue is that we have to now upgrade the plumbing service uh, to this apartment complex because the existing plumbing can't handle the amount of crabs in there. We're just rigging up a bigger pump and hopefully it doesn't sink the pontoon boat because it's real sketchy. This pontoon boat actually is always actively sinking. There's lots of water in the pontoons all the time which is why it's here and not out there being used. But underneath it here, in the middle of the deck, there's a, like a floating pier piece in the back there. So that's why the stern sits way higher than the bow. It makes for a terrible boat, but it makes for a great platform here. Tank has like eight inches more water in the bow end than it does the stern end. So I'm going to put that tank there and it's either gonna do the opposite thing or even it out, I'm not sure. It's either a great idea or a terrible one. Yes, I'm one. Step closer to being a crab slumlord. That's, that's a little extreme. Some pressure there. Those guys are moving to the suburb. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's what I said. The haves and the have nots. Moving on up. <laughs> have to upgrade the plumbing service. Deluxe apartment. What's the population of loose crab down? 
I'm a slumlord now. A trad slumlord. You could make bigger holes in that pipe. It would be easier to work around if it was just drizzling out the end, rather than spraying you every time you got close to it. Yeah. It makes it a little hard to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I think bigger holes would make it calmer. Oh boy, now it's almost overflowing down there. Right, moving the bottom tray this way would help the accessibility of crab. Bottom tray this way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would also help our weight distribution problem. So you can see uh, I'm soaked because uh, I went under the tank, tried to scoot it, and then a wave of water came and dumped down the uh, front of my back here. It was underneath and I plugged in the electric and my head was under the pipe and then it just completely soaked me from the top down. Refreshing. I'm now looking for my tripod to set up because I didn't catch either one of those things on camera. It would have been way more worth it if I did. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. At least turn the water off and let it drain down. Anyway. Let's all do it one time on a jerk, okay? On three. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. That looks, looks better, better, right? better balanced. Fire back up? Yeah. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, God! Tighten those bolts right there. This is going to end in some kind of disaster. I don't know what it is. Something's going to happen and you guys are going to be trying to have it. Yeah, it's too much to go wrong. Yeah, see, I'm only completely soaked. <laughs> so, that's the biggest thing that Yeah, then we're doing good. This is a crab zen garden. <laughs> For me, the, the complete opposite of a zen garden. <laughs> it up. No, I actually like it. I, I, think it's, I think it's all I've ever dreamed of. It's sort of relaxing. It looks like a pond piece here. Yeah, and a few days ago, you were killing dealers like they were going out of style with no market for them. No, it's great. I like it. Well, it's, it's working. We have more water flow. I'm now officially a crab slumlord. I do think that we improved at least the look of it. Aesthetically, I think it's better. We're winning. That's really what we're after, typically, is aesthetics around here. Well, we're getting ready to go. I was actually just putting my lunch on the exhaust pan folds, the soft crab right there. And notice that the Raycor is completely full of nasty, disgusting water and algae. So we need to drain all this stuff out or else we're gonna be real sad by the time we get out there. Oh, shoot, crap. I need something else up there to put fuel in. Don't even know how that thing was still running, to be honest. The most important part is to cross thread the nut. Maybe it'll at least give the soft crabs extra flavor. It's weird, it's not filling up. I knew you'd be good at that job. Yep. That's more what you want your diesel to look like. Don't want your diesel to look like that. That is no bueno. Fuel problem fixed, motor started. That looks like me, that's what I used to do. I had almost the identical boat, 16 foot of lima craft and a bunch of little snap traps. I used to grab that same edge out here, grabbing different edges, just with bigger toys. Oh wow, look, we even got some traffic this morning. Luckily we have both lanes open right now. All right, AJ wants to try something. What are you gonna do? All right, we're gonna put this giant blue catfish carcass in the top of a pot. <laughs> see, if, see if the crabs like it. What are you gonna put in the bait well? Uh, the usual. Cheese balls? Yep. Crabs love cheese balls. Sort of like can of catch, but with cheese balls and a giant catfish. There you go. We'll check back next week and see if the catfish did anything or it's just gonna be a nasty, disgusting, rotten mess in the top of a crab pot. Got this weird little fish today. Catch them a lot, but this is probably the big one of the bigger ones I've ever seen. It's a fish called a hog choker. They're usually about that big, and that one's about twice the size of the average one. It's not a flounder, it looks like a flounder, but it's a goofy little thing. You look at it, it's got two little eyeballs and a weird little mouth right there. Hardy little fish, these things live out of water forever. Apparently, the reason they call them hog chokers, allegedly is because back in the Daniel Boone days, they used to uh, feed fish to hogs, random little fish and stuff. And the hog chokers are like one big muscle. And I guess the hogs would try to swallow them whole because they're small, and then they would stiffen up in their throat, and then it would choke them out and kill them. That's what they say, but man, love 
helped uh, chafe me up a little bit today. I hope people buy these salt crabs. Plenty got plenty. We're here at Jimmy's to do some final tasting for the new season coming out. Tony's right here. We're gonna get in there and try it on a bunch of different stuff. We have been working hard. Oh, it's so windy. We've been working really hard on this. And it's been taking a little while, but we were trying to get it really right the first time. We're trying to get it everywhere, so putting in the work for you guys. We're making all kinds of stuff. Shrimp, chicken, ribs. You can have this seasoning on everything. And here it is. It is so good. Got all the soft crabs ready for tomorrow. Ember. Look at all them soft crabs. Shed them all out out of my homemade slough tank. Ah, uh, pretty. Hopefully I can sell them all. There's quite a few of them. Probably like 10 dozen in there. Maybe not quite 10 dozen. These ones are the ones that need to be cleaned and frozen. Right. We're gonna sell them tomorrow. I like this fridge. It's my old buddy Neil's fridge. He passed away, unfortunately, but he run the snowball stand in town for a long time that I grew up going to. He had soda and pickles in here. <laughs> with this little tray. My whole life I was getting sodas and out of this thing. His son Eric, who's a good buddy of mine, sold it to me. And now I'm using it for soft crabs. It's just funny that I've literally known this machine my entire life and now I'm keeping soft crabs in it. Instead of buying sodas out of it as a little kid. We'll see you tomorrow. Well, it's Saturday and that means it's time to go sell some crabs at the crab stand. But I am going to go check the peeler tank for the last time. Let's get the last of the soft crabs that I'm gonna have for today. Hopefully we can sell them. Ooh, put it in reverse, Terry. Grab some lids. I don't have like a really good thing to put soft crabs on. So I've just been using these lids. I'll take them and soak them in water and then stick them in my freezer. They stay cold, you know, while I'm putting them out there in the hot sun. It, it kind of just helps keep them a little cold, which is nice because uh, soft crabs are finicky little things. And if you don't handle them right, they ain't worth anything. My tank works pretty well, but a lot of times I come in and it's like actively sinking. You see that? It's not ideal. But the problem is that it's so much water, crabs keep getting stuck up against the grate over there. Oh man, that landed perfectly. And it won't let the water drain out. I bet there's a crab stuck up against here. Yep, oh, gotta turn the pump off first. That would've been a good idea. Just flip the switch. Yep, just as I suspected. Crab shell, not allowing it to drain. Ew, a little bit of carnage in here. Wow, we had some crab shed, huh? A lot of them didn't make it. Pretty ones, big pretty crabs. Ugh. Love to see. Love it, love it, love it. A lot of empty shells. This guy, he's a paper shell, he's too hard. It's his lucky day. Soft crabs, soft crabs. People keep asking, how can I tell the difference between a soft crab and a hard crab so I don't reach down and get pinched? Well, sometimes I can't, but I don't know. They kind of sit differently and uh, you can just, after you've looked at like thousands and thousands thousands of them you kind of get to tell <laughs> what they look like man that's a pretty one he's too way too hard bummer this guy look at that he's almost hard and his arm's still stuck in the shell that's how you get him with like weird claws and stuff see like that that claw would it would get hard just like that and that's how you'd end up with a crab with a crazy looking claw because they get stuck in the shells just like that and then the shell eventually falls apart See if we can pull the shell off around him. And then his claw will get hard. Look, he's trying to pinch me. He's gonna end up with like some goofy, goofy strong claw. Oh no, he lost it. Oh well. Claw wasn't gonna help him anyway. Too hard paper shell. Too soft to be a hard crab, too hard to be a soft crab. The rule of thumb is usually if you can rub the points down on him, they're soft, but he's just a little too hard. Oh man, bummer, bummer, bummer. Well, this is pretty cool. Well, the crab shed out and he's like very light blue, like maybe leucistic, not albino, but like, see, they're supposed to be dark green. This one's like light, light blue. Maybe we'll keep him in here a little while. And see, turns out to be, that's pretty neat. That's not a common crab. That's very, very rare. we we'll catch a couple a year like that. If anybody has any name ideas for the white crab, let us know. Plug the tank back in and we'll be headed up to the crab stand. That's pretty there, isn't it? Mm. 
beautiful delicacies. Everybody working well together. Shout out to my neighbors here, by the way. These guys are awesome. Give them a call. They really are good people. Crab stand set up, merch into the boat, fridge hooked up, and we're gonna get fridge back to the boat. Ooh, we open for business here. It is really cool to still see this thing. It's still like new enough to be a novelty to me. <laughs> One of my favorite parts about this whole thing is how efficient the space is used here. And I put a lot of thought into that because this is a very, very small lot. We have angling parking. And then we have the boat tied up against the other side with the truck and the trailer and a piece of space that would be otherwise sort of unusable and a turnaround area at the very back of the lot so people don't have to back out onto this busy road. There's not a lot of wasted space. It's pretty efficient and I just, I like that, I don't know why. And everybody that comes down and sees it says that it looks way better in person, that pictures and videos do not do this thing justice. Don't take my word for it. Listen to the people, come down and see it. It was a good day at the crab stand. Probably the best day besides opening day that we've had. We sold every single crab and then some. I always thought for sure we we're gonna get stuck with all these soft crabs. But about 15 dozen soft crabs, I thought I was never gonna sell them all. And we sold them in 20 minutes. Before 11, we had a line around the corner. People wanting to get these soft crabs and get hard crabs. We sold every single hard crab I caught all week and then some. I, I got nothing left for the weekend. I think that we are probably gonna end up taking tomorrow off. Super happy to see people coming and buying crabs. I think people are starting to get into the groove of it. The next weekend is Father's Day, so we have a lot of work to do before next weekend. We will be grinding that holiday weekend. Can't thank everybody enough for coming out. It was awesome. Inquiring minds wanna know why we're sold out of crabs, hon.